Entity Component System, or ECS, is a programming pattern you've probably heard of if you're interested in game development. It's both revered and criticized, and trying to find a consensus on the proper way to implement it would take you around as many hours as I have in Valorant. It's better to instead take away principles from patterns rather than blindly following them, so I want to make my own ECS for my game to suit my needs. If you don't know what an ECS is, or why you'd use it, I think comparing it to the object-oriented approach to entities is a great place to start understanding it. Traditionally, entities inherit behaviors in games, so I'd have a weapon-based class and maybe a sword and a bow that derive from that class. This works, but what if I want a weapon that behaves like both a sword and a bow? It can't derive from both, so which one do we pick as a base class? This is a common example that shows the pitfalls of inheritance, and why instead of innate behaviors given to an entity, we want to opt for composition, wherein we simply attach behaviors to an entity instead, using what's called components. We then use these components in something called a system, which just takes the components belonging to an entity and operates on them. So in essence, entities are just groupings of components, components are data, and systems are functions that use and alter that data. Although not required, but usually recommended, we want to keep data close together when making an ECS. This approach of keeping the data close together in memory and accessing it is called Data-Oriented Design, or DoD. Since entity component systems operate on the principles of DoD, they can be really fast and efficient if used correctly, but that's not why I'm using it. Honestly, I just want to avoid inheritance and create decoupled components that I can reuse, since I'm expecting to have a lot of entities that share behavior in my game. Alright, with that, let's get into the ECS that I'm creating. I'll start by declaring some amount of lists, where each list contains one type of component. So we'll have a list for transform components, sprite components, physics components, etc. Each list will be the same size, and the corresponding index in each list will represent the components belonging to one entity. If an entity has a component, it's filled green, and if not, then it's red. You'll notice then that all an entity is at the end of the day is just an ID, which we use to index the components belonging to that entity. I'll also make a map that will store the entity ID as a key, and use a set that points to each component list the entity is associated with as a value, so we know which components an entity has added to it with just the ID. So for example, my movement system that is responsible for moving an entity might look like this, where I simply retrieve the transform and physics components, then alter the entity's position in the transform component using the velocity and the physics component. The downside of my ECS implementation is that not every entity will use every component, so we'll often have vectors that are almost completely empty at times. A solution to this could be archetypes or sparse sets, but whatever, I've gotten stuck in the early optimization trap too many times, so I'll worry about it if it becomes an issue. When it came to implementing this, finding a way to store the component pools was tricky, since I needed a dynamic way to store and access different template classes. This is where polymorphism in C++ becomes incredibly helpful. If I make some base interface class, let's just call it iComponentPool, and each component pool is a templated class that derives from iComponentPool, then I can make a map that stores the name of the component as a key and a pointer to the base class as a value. This way, the map just stores memory addresses to a bunch of different base component pools, but it doesn't know what kind of a component pool it is exactly yet. Once I want to access a specific component pool, I just query for the component's name using the key, and then use a dynamic cast which will downcast the base class back into the specific subclass. In this case, it will turn a generic component pool into one that stores transform components, and I can manipulate it however I want. With the ECS in place, I'd like to showcase it a little and show how I'd use it to implement textures and sprites. I wrote up a quick class to load in textures from a file and store them in a texture object using STB image. And then I made a component called texture component, which simply just stores a pointer to a texture as well as a tint to change the color of the texture. Note that I could put whatever data I want in here, like a tiling factor or a name for the texture, but I'm keeping it simple for now for this example. Now, all I do is generate an entity ID using my ECS, add the texture component to the entity I want, and then, in my render system that is responsible for rendering entities, I check if the entity has a texture component and render a textured quad if it does, or if it lacks a texture component, I just draw a normal colored quad. I also added some quick logic to change a texture tint depending on the position of the player, and voila, this is the result. I'm still getting into the flow of making these devlogs, and honestly if I kept this format up of focusing on one topic at a time, it'll take 10 episodes to see any gameplay. So for the next one, I'm going to finish up the basic foundations behind the scenes so I can get some gameplay going and just talk about any challenges that might have popped up.